Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna start. So we're gonna continue with uh, eigenvalues. Eigenvectors and ODEs. I guess this is like the fourth part of this. Okay, and um, and so last time I talked about uh, why we wanted it. Uh, so. So last time we talked about uh, talking about higher order differential equations in one dependent variable. So just like y prime prime is appearing a lot, where y is just a single uh, variable. Then we talked about converting those into higher order or, or um, uh, first order differential equations in many variables. Okay, and so we, we converted these into linear differential equations in many variables. Okay, so um, and. Uh, we talked about how if you have a basis of eigenvectors for these uh, systems of uh, uh, this, these, this first order systems, right, then you can solve the, the differential equation by, you know, breaking it up into parts. You get very simple equations. And so today I'm going to do an example in practice, okay? So, um, so first I'm going to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix, and then I'm going to use those to solve a particular differential equation. Um, and this is, all right, so... Okay, so here's an example problem. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, so uh, let A be the following matrix. So minus two, minus two, one, zero. So this is like the matrix we had before, but I think I I flipped um, either a column or a row, right? Okay, so let A be this matrix, and uh, so find uh, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors uh, for this matrix. So again, uh, when I ask you to do this, um, I've kind of baked into this is that this is possible. Okay, so not every matrix admits a basis of eigenve uh, eigenvectors. Okay, so um, just beware of that when you're doing something in practice. All right, you have to work, go with generalized eigenvectors. Okay, so the first step is to um, the first step was to find the values. So find the eigenvalues. So this means find, uh, so find lambda such that the matrix uh, A minus lambda times the identity is not invertible. Or it's singular. Okay? All right, so, so uh, remember that a matrix is not invertible if and only if its determinant is not invertible. Okay, so, so, so we need to find, so, such that, sorry, the determinant is, non -zero, uh, is zero. I is equal to zero. All right, so let's compute what this thing is. All right, so, um, so here, a minus lambda times the identity. So we're going to take the matrix A minus 2, and then we're going to subtract lambda. 1 minus lambda like so. Okay, so this is the 2 by 2 matrix here. So I just subtracted the, the, sorry, this is the identity. So, you know, the diagonals with 1s, but I just multiplied by lambda. So that's why we're subtracting it. Okay, so we have this thing, and now we're going to compute this determinant. So the determinant of A minus lambda times this thing. So it's the determinant of this matrix that I just wrote down. Minus 2 minus lambda minus 2, 1 minus lambda. All right, and so to take the determinant, we multiply the diagonals here. We do minus 
minus 2 and 1. So, all right. So now we're going to expand this out. So this is lambda squared minus or plus 2 lambda plus 2. So this thing is the characteristic polynomial. This is what's called the characteristic polynomial. of A. All right. Okay, so, um, and so we need to find the, the, so to solve when this thing's equal to zero, this is what we want to do. We set this equal to zero. So the eigenvalues are solutions of the following equation. So are of this thing Okay, so we solve for this thing. So we solve for lambda. So lambda is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, 2 squared minus 4 ac, which is 2, divided by 2a. Okay, and so I'm just going to bring this up here. All right, now we're just going to simplify a little bit. So we have 4 minus 8 over 2 minus 2 plus or minus the square root of minus 4 over 2 minus 2 plus or minus. And then this is really 2 times i over 2. So this is minus 1 plus or minus i. Okay, so this is like the th same thing we had for the linear equation before. So lambda 1, so this is going to be 1 plus i, and lambda 2 is equal to minus 1 minus i. So these are our two eigenvalues. Okay, so that was step 1. We, find, we, found, the, we found the eigenvalues, all right? So now we're going to find the eigenvectors. Step two. So find the eigenvectors. All right. So um, I'm just going to continue. So we need to compute. Uh, compute the kernel, the kernel or null space. So null space from linear algebra of uh, this thing. Uh, a minus lambda 1 times the identity and A minus lambda 2 times the identity. Okay? So the, the kernel or uh, null spaces of this, these are the like eigenspaces of associated to these eigen, uh, eigen, eigenvalues, all right? So let's do the first case, okay? So let's do the case k is equal to 1, or uh, the lambda 1 case, right? Okay? So um, here, lambda 1, this is minus 1 plus i. OK, so now let me warn you about something here, OK? So there's lots of possibilities to make sign errors, OK? So um, uh, like, you know, when you get the wrong answer at the end, it's usually because you made like a silly mistake, OK? So this is something that happens a lot, OK? At least for me, OK? So I'm just going to write down um, uh, what this matrix is. So this is. Uh, minus 2 minus lambda 1 minus 2, and then we have 1 minus lambda 1. Okay, and now I'm going to plug in what lambda 1 is. So let's do it up here. Okay, so this thing here. So this is equal to minus 2 minus, lambda 1 was minus 1 
uh, plus i. Okay, minus 2. And then we had 1. And then we had minus, minus 1 plus i. Okay, so this matrix is now minus 2 plus 1 minus i minus 2. 1, and then we have plus 1 uh, minus i. All right. Okay. Um, so here I've already done something stupid. There we go. Okay, plus 1. All right, so we have uh, minus 1 minus i minus 2, 1. And then we have 1 minus i like this. All right. So uh, we want to find something in the kernel of this matrix. Okay. So we want to find so a minus lambda 1 times the identity. And we want to find some a, b, which is equal to 0. All right. So this is true if and only if. Well, I'm just going to write it down now. Minus 1 minus i. 2, 1, minus that. So we have 1 minus i, like so. All right, and if you catch me make a mistake, let me know. All right. OK, so this thing needs to be 0. And by 0, of course, we mean like the 0 vector, right? But I'm not always going to write the 0 vector, right? It's 0, 0, like so. All right, now we continue. So you don't necessarily need to solve it the same way I do. There's other ways of, of doing this, like Gaussian elimination, things like that. Okay, But now I'm just going to convert this into a system of equations. Okay, So here we have minus 1 minus i a uh, plus a minus 2 times b is equal to 0. And then we also have this other equation a plus 1 minus i b is equal to 0. OK, so the second equation what does the second equation tells us? So this tells us that a is equal to minus 1 minus i b. Or a is equal to minus 1 plus i b. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to try um, uh, setting this thing here, a, b. So the eigenvectors, um, you can scale them, and they'll still be an eigenvector. So I'm just going to pick a particular value. So let's say b is equal to 1, OK? And then that makes this thing minus 1 plus i. So we pick. Uh, b is equal to 1. OK, so uh, you can scale them, right? And it doesn't matter. It still spans the same eigenspace. All right. All right. OK, so let's try that thing, and let's test what it does. So let's see that it's in the kernel. a minus lambda 1 i times this vector that I made. Uh, we'll just write it like that. All right. And so let's write out what our, uh, our matrix again. Minus 1 minus i, minus 2, 1, 1 minus i, like this. And then I'm going to plug in this matrix like this. OK, and let's continue what this is. OK. All right, and now I'm just going to do a, a multiplication here. So here, let's do the first one. So this is minus 1 minus i times minus 1 plus i. OK? And now we have a plus a minus 2 times uh, 1. OK? Now we do this one. So we have 1 times uh, minus 1 plus i. And then we have plus uh, 1 minus i times 1, like this. I'm just going to check that it's in the kernel. OK, so do you guys see that this thing here, let me give you guys a second, I guess. OK, so this one here is the complex conjugate of this one. 
You guys agree? Right, so this is just the norm. You can also see it as a difference of squares. Okay? So this one here is 2 minus 2. Right? And then this one here is the negative of this one. Okay, so this one's 0 as well. So this is equal to 0, 0. So this, this, this little part here, this little computation, this, this confirms that, so this confirms that uh, this thing uh, is in the eigenspace, is in the kernel of a minus lambda 1 times the identity. All right. So the conclusion that we get here is that we conclude that, um, so the conclusion for this little part is that this thing, C1, which is uh, this thing, minus 1 plus i, is an eigenvector for A with eigenvalue uh, lambda 1, which is um, lambda 1 was uh, minus 1 plus i. OK? So this is an eigenvalue and an eigenvector. Yeah? I just thought it was easy, because this would let you just set this one equal to that. So you set a equal to this piece here. So these equations will be dependent, right? Yeah. So there's two equations, two unknowns, and you can't really solve for it, yeah. Uh, because this, yeah, there's these, these things will be dependent. Yeah, those equations will be dependent. OK? And you can see that they're dependent. Well, I just picked something, right? And then it worked out, right? So you can see, already see that it's dependent. Okay, so let's do the next eigenvector. Okay, so we'll do the, so k is equal to 2. So k refers to lambda sub k, right? Right, or lambda 2. We'll, we're going to do the, the, comp the same computation in this case. So lambda 2 was the complex conjugate of the first eigenvector. So this is minus 1 minus i. Okay, it's not always the complex conjugate. It's just like so much stuff here. OK. OK. So let's just do the exact same thing that we did, right? So we'll do a minus lambda 2 times the identity. All right? So a, let me write this out again. So minus 2, minus 2, 1, 0. Minus lambda 2. Lambda 2 was this thing. Uh, minus 1, minus i. And then we had the identity matrix. OK, so this matrix here is minus 2 minus, and now we're going to do minus 1 minus i, OK? Minus 2, 1, and now I'm going to do a minus minus of this thing. So minus, minus 1 minus i. So you can see how the minus is, right? They can get uh, nasty, right? Minus 2 plus 1, minus, uh, plus i, uh, careful. OK, so then we have uh, 1 uh, plus i, like so. All right, let's write this out now. OK, so this is equal to um, a minus 1 plus i, minus 2, 1, 1 plus i, like so. OK. OK, so now we want to find an element in the kernel, right? OK, so let's find an element in the kernel. So a minus lambda 2 times i here 
a, b. So this thing, we want this to be equal to 0, right? And so I'm just going to copy down this matrix. So minus 1 plus i minus 2, 1, 1 plus i, a, b. OK, so this equation is the same thing as the following system of equations. Minus 1 plus i times a plus minus 2 times b is equal to 0, because this is the 0, 0 matrix. Then we have a times 1 plus 1 plus i times b, and this is equal to 0. OK, so the second equation here, so again, um, yeah, so the second equation, So the second equation gives what? So the second equation says that a plus 1 plus i b is equal to 0, All right, which tells us that a is equal to minus 1 plus i b. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to try following, we're going to let the, do the second eigenvector like this, okay? And it's going to be, so we're going to try uh, setting b equal to 1 again. So b is equal to 1. This is going to be minus 1 plus i. All right? So this is the ab, so this is ab. Okay, and so let's check that this works. So let's check. All right. So here, so a minus lambda 2i c2. All right, so now we're just going to copy everything down. Minus 1 plus i minus 2, 1 1 plus i. And now I'm going to copy down what that thing is. So this is minus 1 plus i, 1. All right. Now let's do it out. OK, minus 1 plus i. So we have a uh, minus 1 plus i. Minus, or let's say plus or minus 2 times 1, okay? And so then we have a 1 times uh, minus 1 plus i uh, plus 1 plus i. Okay. Okay, so this one here is really, let me write this out. So this thing is minus 1 plus i, and then we have a minus 1 minus i. These are complex conjugate. Minus 2. Okay, and then these are opposites here. So we have a minus 1 plus i plus 1 plus i. So this thing here is the norm squared of this thing. So this is really minus 1 plus i squared minus 2. And then this thing is 0. Okay? And so the norm squared of this is you take the x component squared and the y component squared and you add them together, right? And that's 2. So this is, uh, let's just go up here. Okay, so this computation goes like this. So this is equal to this thing. So this is uh, 2 minus 2, and this is 0. So this is 0, 0. So this confirms. that this vector here is in the kernel, the kernel of, of a minus lambda 2 times the identity. OK? So uh, what's the conclusion we get? So the conclusion 
we conclude uh, that, uh, that C2, uh, so this vector was this thing, minus 1 plus I1 is an eigenvector for A with uh, eigenvalue lambda 2, which was minus 1 minus i. Okay, so the recap is that, uh, so we computed, now what we've done is we've computed the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. Okay, so, so again, so, so the big conclusion so C1 which was uh, something <laughs> what was it what was C1 and C2 which was something so one was like I think they just have the the eigenvalue up top right it's not always like that but So lambda 2, uh, so this was minus 1 minus i. And I think this was minus 1 plus i, 1. And lambda 1 was uh, minus 1 plus i. Let me check that that's right. So um, minus 1 minus i, uh, eigenvalues. Of, OK, so these were the eigenvalues. Uh, and so these were the eigenvalues. Okay, values for our matrix A. All right, that makes sense? Okay, so that's how you compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix, is that you just kind of have to like slog through it, right? Uh, not fun, but that's how you do it. Okay, and of course, if you're going to do something big in practice, use a computer, right? Any questions on that? OK. So uh, all right. So now let's, do, let's solve a linear differential equation with that matrix. OK? So here, let's do the following. So here's a problem. OK, so, uh, so solve the initial value problem. Here, uh, say dy dt is equal to ay, and we'll say y of 0 is equal to y10, y20. Okay, so where uh, A is the matrix we just did all that work for, uh, like so. Okay. Okay. So we'll do this problem now. Okay. So we're going to use our eigenvalues and eigenvectors to solve this thing. So y is going to be, uh, uh, you know, it's going to have two components in it, y1, y2, and we're going to solve for this thing. Okay. Okay. So we know. So here's the solution. Okay, so we know that uh, the eigenvalues, uh, so let me just copy them down again. Uh, so we have lambda 2 is this thing. Eigenvector uh, eigenvalue pairs all right and so um, what we're going to do is we're going to write our solution so we write uh, y uh, y 
y of t as the following. So we're going to write it as y is equal to w1 t c1 plus w2 t c2. All right. So um, I'm going to label this ODE here star. Okay, so we can always write our, so this is a basis, so we can expand in terms of this basis, and there's a W1 and W2 that, that work. Okay, so um, now let's plug this back into our, our equation. So putting this into uh, this thing gives the following, right? So it gives, so... Um, so dy dt is going to be uh, w1 prime of t c1 plus w2 prime of t c, c2. So this is going to be equal to um, w1 of t times lambda 1 c1 plus w2 t lambda 2 c2, okay, which implies the following system of equations, w1 prime t is equal to lambda 1 w1 of t, and w2 prime of t is equal to lambda 2 w2 of t. All right? Okay, so uh, in other words, i.e., uh, so we had minus 1 plus i, w1 of t, and then all right, so we have those two uh, equations here. And those we can solve easily. So that's the magic of the eigenvectors, right, is that we took the complicated matrix thing, we turned it into those really two simple differential equations, and they've been decoupled, right? They've been decoupled in that this, this differential equation for w, w1 only involves w1, and the differential equation for w2 only involves w2. All right. So uh, now we know how to solve that differential equation, right? So we know how to solve these differential equations. these. Okay, so W1 looks like some constant e to the lambda 1, so lambda 1 t uh, is equal to C2, right, for some uh, C1, C2 in the complex numbers. Okay, so we can solve for those things, right? And so, um, all right, and so I guess if we wanted to, to, we could write this out more specifically. So this is C1 uh, e to the uh, minus 1 plus i t, and then we have this is C2 e to the minus 1 minus i t. Okay, so we have, this is what I mean by, by uh, those solutions, okay? So we can solve them. All right, now what? Now I'm going to uh, uh, write down the general solution of the, the differential equation. So the general solution, therefore, the general solution of star, oh, no, OK. So the general solution of star is the following. So, well, we have y. Well, it just looks like c1 e to the lambda 1 t c1. C, so, like, I'm trying to differentiate those two noises. OK? e to the lambda 2 t times the other eigenvector. OK? So this is what this thing looks like. And now we can try and, like, the only thing we don't know are the c1 and c2. And we have to use the initial conditions to solve for those. Okay, so um, so what does this thing look like? You know, it's it's c1 uh, e to the minus 
t e to the i t times this eigenvector plus c2 e to the minus i t c2. OK, again, I just took this thing and I broke that up into two pieces. I distributed and broke it up. All right. OK, so, um, so, uh, so now uh, we use this. OK, so this is the general solution right here. OK? And let me tell you that you can solve for the constants using the initial conditions. So we solve for c1 and c2 using the initial conditions. All right. So what do I mean by that? So notice that. Um, so y0, this is what I plugged in here. But we could have specified some other things. So this was given from the initial, uh, uh, in the initial value problem. And I, I, I left these as unknowns. Okay, But later, we'll, we'll specialize them to 1, 1. But I just want to show you what, what's going on in the special case. right? So this is equal to this thing, but you plug in 0 everywhere. right? This is equal to c1. Right, so note that uh, here that uh, uh, here e to the minus t uh, e to the i t evaluated at t is equal to zero is one, and e to the minus t e to the minus i t at t is equal to zero is also one. So that's where we got. That's why you, these things just pop out. Okay, something else might pop out later. If you're not evaluating at zero, something else will pop out. Okay, so so warning. If uh, at something other than zero, time other than zero, uh, something else will pop out. Okay, so you'll get like you know this thing, but with t naught in there or something. Okay, where t naught is your value. Okay, let me just maybe put this all together. That comment there. Okay, so uh, let's see what this thing looks like. So what does this give us? So at this as a matrix equation. We have the following, right? Y10, Y20, this is equal to, okay, so we have this thing, something like this, C1, C2, okay? And so this thing is we just plug in our eigenvectors. So what are our eigenvectors? Our eigenvectors, well, we had. That this thing, so let me just remind you what they were. So this is minus 1 plus i. And this was 1. And this thing here was minus 1 minus i 1. So let me just say this. Recall what these things are. OK? This is an equal sign here. And so I'm just going to put them in. Minus 1 plus i 1. Minus 1, minus i, 1, c1, c2. OK, so we have this sort of matrix equation between these coefficients and the initial values. OK? So we'll call this matrix E. So E, E is this matrix with the eigenvectors as the columns, right? then we really have this, this equation here that says that um, here, E 
Okay, and so we can solve for C1 and C2, right? So we can solve Right, so we have that E inverse y10, y20 is this thing C1, C2. All right, so uh, how do you compute the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix? So let's. Okay, so let's do that. Who remembers how to compute the inverse of a two by two matrix? So here, uh, so if we do A, B, C, D inverse, so this is one over the determinant, and then you, uh, then you, what you do is you flip these sides and then you flip the sign here. Okay, so this is the formula for the inverse of a two by two matrix. Okay, so that's one way of doing this. Okay, um, you could also, okay, let me just say that you could also just like break this down into a system of equations and solve. Okay, that's another way of doing this, the same thing, right? But we could, we could compute the inverse of a matrix. Let's do that. It's kind of fun, right? So uh, this part is, so, so let's compute E inverse, right? So the determinant, so let's compute, right? So the determinant of E, so that's this part here, this AD minus BC. So this is AD, so we have minus plus one, uh, there we go, one minus, uh, so this is minus a minus minus one like this. Okay, let's see what this thing is. So, um, so this is equal to minus one plus i, and then we have a minus minus, so this is plus one minus i, or plus i, right? And so this is just two i. Right, so this is our two by two matrix here. Okay, and so the inverse matrix, so E, so we have uh, this thing here, I minus one minus I, one one inverse, so this is one over two I, and then we're gonna flip the things, okay? So, uh, so these two things get flipped, and then the signs of these ones get flipped. I, okay. And so let me just double check that I did the computation correctly. So, um, so I have a sign difference here. Uh, where's my sign? Uh, uh, top left value here, here, here. Oh, minus one plus i, right? It's a minus there, and that's correct. Yeah. Okay, that's what I got before class. Thank you. Okay. So again, like I said, like the sign errors are real, right? Okay. All right, so now, um, now we'll just kind of, we'll, we'll, let's compute what uh, E inverse of, let's compute this thing uh, here. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to compute that. So E inverse of Y10, Y20. Okay, and so we're just going to write this out. Like so. Okay. 
And so this thing becomes, uh, so, uh, sorry, then we have this thing. All right, so this is 1 over 2i, like so. y10 plus 1 plus i, y20. And we have minus 1, y10 plus negative 1 plus i, y20. Okay, and that's our, those are the constants. Right? These are the constants we use actually to get the initial values. So this tells us that here, C1 is 1 over 2i, y10 plus 1 plus i, y20. C2 is equal to 1 over 2i, y10 plus minus 1 plus i, y20. Okay, so those are our, our two constants and that allows us to solve the initial value problem, okay? So that's one solution. Um, we can specialize to the case, right? All right. So this is this gives us the answer, right? This gives us the this gives us our coefficients. And that solves the initial value problem. It looks like there's a lot of i's involved, right? Okay. So one thing we can do. So, okay. So this gives the answer, right? Right, so we have that y uh, this thing plus c2, right? And we can actually just write this all out and it'll solve the initial value problem, okay? Okay, but if, um, suppose we want to, to, okay, okay, suppose we take uh, uh, y10 to be equal to 1 and y20 to be equal to 1. One can check, check that this mess is actually real valued, right? So uh, let me show you how, let me, let me give you the answer, right? And then I'll tell you that, uh, I'll tell you what, then I'll, then I'll start the computation because I don't think I'll be able to finish it, right? Okay, so it turns out that if you expand all that stuff out, this is what you're going to get. So if we expand everything out, and use Euler's formula, uh, you get the following different, you get the following answer. Y of t, okay, so this thing looks like the following e to the minus t, cosine t minus 3 sine t, cosine of t plus 2 sine of t, right? So if you were actually going to see what this thing does, right, when we plug in y1 is equal to 0 and y2 is equal to 0, I claim that's the answer that you get. You get something that's a lot nicer looking, okay? So, um, all right, so maybe uh, I'll do that next time, right? So uh, the quiz at the beginning of the ne uh, next class is I'm going to have you do something with eigenvalues and eigenvectors, right? And then after we take the quiz, what we're going to do is I'll explain that out and I'll, I'll show you guys how to get that from, um, from this, this mess here, okay?